What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to perform quadrant analysis, or really how to build a quadrant chart within Power BI. Quadrant charts are really helpful because they let us divide data into four different quadrants. As you can see on the screen, we're able to clearly see a distinction between these four different sections. And right now we are looking at movie critic data. This is data coming from Rotten Tomatoes. So basically each data point is a movie and on the X is its critic rating and on the Y is the audience rating. We can see that the average critic rating of all the movies is this X axis line at 61 and the average audience Audience rating is the y-axis line at 61 as well so all the movies that fall above the critic line and the audience line are in this blue section up here that means they performed really really well they're just really good movies oppositely the movies in the green section are those that have performed poorly um, you can choose whichever colors you want to make most sense with your data set but this is really cool because it is dynamic so as you see with all of our data our averages are 61 and it's colored accordingly uh, but if i were to select documentary for example that genre of movie tends to perform very well. It has an average critic rating of 82, average user rating of 74. So we have this very highly concentrated area of movies that fall within our really good rating, whereas it's more sparse um, for those that fall below the critic and audience ratings. Oppositely, if we look at the horror genre, those movies tend to perform very poorly. So their average ratings are in the 40s, so we can see a much higher concentration of poorly performing movies as opposed to uh, really good movies. So it's really cool to see. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to recreate this exact visual in one alternative form using just the basic scatter chart visual. So let's get started. Now we're gonna walk through how to build this visual. If you do just wanna download the PBX file, you can find the blog post in the link down below. There will be a download link on that blog post. So let's go ahead and open up a new tab and I'm just going to create a basic scatter chart and we are going to throw in our data. So I've already preloaded my movie set data here. So we have, um, and on the X axis, we can take our tomato meter, tomato meter uh, rating, throw that on the x-axis, and let's throw in our audience rating on the y. So if we select don't summarize for each of these, we're now going to have our breakdown of movie rating. So critic rating is the one on the x, uh, audience rating is on the y, just remember that tomato meter rating is the critic rating. Um, so previously, just to kind of give you a history of constant lines within Power BI, these used to be actual constants. So as of recently, we're able to hook them up to a measure to make them dynamically move. But previously, we would have to just type in 50. Now let's make this black and not transparent. We would have to type in 50. I actually want that to be solid. And it wouldn't be able to be moved. So it would just be static there. But we don't necessarily want that because in case we have maybe a subset of movies that are on a smaller scale, let's say the maximum score was a 45 for whatever reason, it wouldn't make sense to have that static constant line. So now we're able to hook this up to a measure and uh, make it move based on our filter context. So in order to do that, you just need to click on this FX button. And before we do that, just a quick note, uh, I think this was released either this month or last month. So make sure you update your Power BI desktop to at least August, 2021. So instead of hard coding this value here, we want to attach a measure. And by default, you probably want to use your average of all of your ratings. So I have this function called average X, and it's actually just the average X function for all selected of my data table and I'm simply throwing in the column that is on my x-axis. And if we wanna see what that value is, we can just take the average x, I'm just gonna throw it in a quick little card over here. The average rating, the tomato meter rating is 60.88. So now, if we come back and we put in, or we use that measure field value called average x for our x-axis constant line, we'll see it moved, but it's also nice if we show the data label. So we can see the value is 61 right there. That's just the rounded version of that. I'm gonna make it black and I'm gonna change it to where it says name and value because I want to say what it is. It's a little bit hard to see with all this data. But I'm gonna rename this to average critic rating. 
So you see my average critic rating is 61. We're gonna do the exact same thing with the y-axis line. So let's go ahead and add it. I'm gonna change it to average audience rating. And let's hook that up to my other measure called average y. Make it black, turn down the transparency. These are just design um, design choices that I'm making. Feel free to make this look however you want. I'm just gonna show you the basic functionality. And lastly, yep, so my average audience rating is a 61 as well. So just to be complete here, be thorough, uh, my average y is the exact same thing, average x of all selected of my table uh, and throwing in my audience rating, which is on my y-axis. So if I were to take this average y and show that, the average audience rating for my entire data set is 60.55. So now this gets cooler when you throw in a slicer here. So I have my genre field. So if I want to look at, let's say, dramas, we see my average x is you know, less than 60, my average Y is above 60. That didn't actually move too much, but you know, like our previous example for horror, we see that that shifted pretty good based on the subset of movies. So now for the final piece of this trick, uh, and that's coloring each data point based on which quadrant it falls in. And we've already gone through and created this measure. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we call our quadrant color measure. This might look like a lot, but it's very simple once you break it down. So I've created four variables. I have current X, which is basically just getting me my single data point that I'm looking at within my visual. So when we think about coloring a single data point, our filter context is gonna be on that single data point. So we're able to access it via selected value. So for our value on the X axis, selected value of our tomato meter rating. For the Y axis value, it's selected value of our audience rating. Then we're going to create a couple variables for our average x value, which is just our average x function, which is what I'm showing you in these cards here. So our average y value as well, which is the average y function. So these two will give us basically our constant lines. Um, and then it's just a single return statement. So I'm returning switch true. And we're checking these criteria to see if our current x is above or below our average x and if our current y is above or below our average y value. So at this point, you just kind of need to think through. So if our current x is less than our average and our y is less than our average, that is this section down here in the bottom left. So we want to color that a certain color. So all of these you can change to any hex code, hex color code that you'd like to uh, use. I just chose four default ones for a quadrant chart that I found online. So basically you just look at each combination of X and Y versus the average values to make the four quadrants. And then finally, I'm returning black if they don't fall in any of the four quadrants. Really what this catches are ones that fall on the line. So if the average is exactly on the line. So if the value is exactly the average value for either the X or Y, it'll be black. You can handle that however you'd like. Um, but that is the entire measure. So in order to use it, all we have to do is go to the formatting, data colors, and let's color by field value and my quadrant color measure. And there we go, it's all colored and it is already dynamic. So that's the entire trick. This produces a really cool dynamic visual. I use quadrant analysis in a lot of my reports and this just got better because of the new functionality for the constant lines that are now dynamic based on measure. So before we end this video, I do want to share one little item here. Now, my preferred method when creating a quadrant chart is to set it up with the dynamic X and Y constant lines that are based on average. You don't necessarily have to do that. Doing it based on average is going to ensure that you don't have any stragglers that are going to skew your proportions. For example, if I had one movie whose rating was a 250 for whatever reason, maybe that was a data entry error, the average wouldn't be skewed very much by that single data point. But oppositely, if you want to keep your crosshairs right in the middle of your screen, you might want to employ a different method, and I've created a couple measures for that. So instead of using the average, we can take the middle value. So let us go ahead and take a look at quadrant X line. So it's just a simple divide function. So I'm taking the minimum rating on the X and the maximum rating on the X and just adding them together and dividing by two. So let's take a look at if I were to switch that 
let me go ahead and duplicate this page actually. So if I were to switch my x-axis line with my other x-axis measure and click OK, and quickly I'm going to do that with my y-axis as well. So I'm going to make that based on my quadrant Y line. So you can see it's kind of always in the middle. So as I were selecting things, it's more in the middle. The coloring is still based on the other logic. That's why you're seeing kind of the discrepancy there, but I'm just showing you based on the line. So if I were to have a big data point that had a value of 250, our crosshairs would actually be skewed based on that one data point. Uh, that would kind of put everything out of proportion. So everything would be on the scale of 100. There'd be that one that's like 250. And our x-axis crosshair would be around 125 at that point. So it wouldn't make too much sense. But if you do know your data um, is very clean and you just want the intersection to sit in the middle of your visual, you might want to do something like this. But up to you. I tend to like the approach using the average of the x and y. Um, I think it's cleaner. But that is the entire thing. If you do like the video, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's the best way to show your support of the channel and helps me continue creating Power BI content. If you like the way I explain Power BI concepts, make sure you check out our training over at training.bielite.com. We have some awesome courses on Power BI, DAX, Alteryx, and SQL at the moment. And we're planning on adding more courses real soon. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.